we'll keep talking as long as we got a voice. If we told each other that if you survive, make sure you tell what they did to us. Because you have a lot of deniers that it didn't happen, they say. It did happen. Well, I was born April 1st, 1928, Starachowicz, Poland. It was 75 kilometers south of Warsaw. I come from a family of nine children. I was the last one. And my mom told the girls, they can't go nowhere. They have to stay put. We were like the third, fourth house from the synagogue. I was right there in the ghetto from October 40 to October 42. And that's when they had that selection. They took the people away to uh, Treblinka. That's almost half of our population they separate us from. On top of a stone quarry, they built for us a slave labor camp. For one more year, we stayed there. One of my sisters, and she became a tailor. The high-ranking officer came to the tailor shop, and he told him, next week you have to, must have all these things ready because all of you are going to be deported. And the tailors, in the meantime, organized an escape. Pitch dark. She came by with a Jewish policeman that she had befriended. She held his hand, she grabbed my hand, and we were running. And the guards knew something was wrong, so they flipped the lights on. They flipped the lights on, and the people were running towards the escape route. And they started shooting at them. The bullet hit me in the back of my head. A bullet grazed me. I had mind not to go back to my barrack where I belong, to go into the women's barrack looking for my sister Fege, because the other two, one of them died of typhoid in the slave labor camp, and one of them high fever. She didn't go line up for work, they shot her. So I only had this one sister, was not there, and then I could not find her, and I was bleeding furiously. And that's when my cousin, when I was in the woman's barrack, she says, let me help you. Your sister's not here. She cleaned me off. She stopped the bleeding with a dry rag. And she told me to put her uh, beret that she was wearing on top of me. She put it on my head and the bleeding stopped. They put us in those freight cars, a hundred to a car like sardines, no water, no bathroom. For four days at least, I came to Auschwitz-Birkenau at 15. The first thing they did is they took away your name and they gave you a number. No shower in three years. Because they didn't give us any soap. In the summertime, we were done dressed from the waist on up, a man, and he didn't have any soap. He took dirt and put it all over you like a mud bed. And the next one would pump the water on you and clean you off. But that didn't kill the lice. And the lice infestation was so bad that some people would die over it. And luckily, we only stayed in that Auschwitz Birkenau for six months. There was not really any work for us to do. We started marching for three kilometers to a place called Buna Manowitz, a subcamp of Auschwitz that we will put on trains and go to another camp called Flossenburg. Until the hatch opened up and the hatch opened up and the beautiful man came out of the hatch, crew cart, America written here in a uniform, put his hands on his mouth. He says, we are Americans and all of you are free. I was 17 years old at that time by myself. And they said I weighed 75 pounds. It took a year to get back to normal. 
I want people to remember to bone, don't be bystanders. Whenever you see anybody is doing injustice to a human being, speak out.